How to use the 2022 Auto Truck Key Blank Reference published by Ilco. Sergeant Locksmith will go over this publication, step by step. This is a must-have for the apprentice locksmith. Down below in the description is the link for the 2022 Auto Truck Key Blank Reference. That's a direct link to the Ilco download section in a PDF format. No BS to go through. Sergeant Locksmith highly recommends this as a must-have since it provides useful information and best of all it's free. Please remember that this video is part of the Locksmithing Basics 101. This is one of the top 10 PDFs he has downloaded to multiple devices. Disclaimer and Fair Use Statement This video may contain copyrighted material, the use of which may not have been specifically authorized by the copyright owner. This material is made available in an effort to explain and discuss relevance to locksmithing. All pictures used are and have been found on the Ilko website. Sergeant Locksmith isn't endorsing nor recommending any product or products in this video. This should constitute a fair use of any such copyrighted material referenced and provided for in Section 107 of the U.S. Copyright Law. All views and expressions are that of Sergeant Locksmith. Now one issue that Sergeant Locksmith has with this publication is, Ilko considers the front cover as page 1. But since Sergeant Locksmith had a few printed at the local print shop which he ordered them with hard covers so now it's right, in his mind. He did pay a little extra to have it done though, but he's happy. Now, let's get started. Go ahead and flip the cover page so we're on page 2. Okay, here on page 2 we will be starting at the top of the page and work our way down. The first thing we have is the table of contents. As you can see it's broken down into sections below that, which we will run through together. The first section we have is the VIN conversion, which is on page 3. The next section we have is the manufacturer index which is also on page 3. Continuing down the list we see the model index. The model index starts on page 4, and goes continues through page 11. The next section below is the auto truck reference, pages 12 through 126. This will be the most important section for you. We will explain that section in depth when we get to that page. By the way we won't be going through this publication page by page. Believe me it gets better here in a bit. The next section down is cloning quick reference, which is a list of the vehicles and models known to incorporate transponder technology that can be done using a RW4 plus slash Ilco easy clone devices. But you can still use that information to help you if your cloning program isn't an Ilco program. You can find that section starting on page 127 through 152, which I will explain when we get to that section of the review. The next section in the table of contents is transponder on board programming procedures pages 153 through 158. This section explains the onboard programming procedures. In that section it covers some of the GM, Ford, Mazda, Toyota, Lexus and Chrysler programmable transponder keys that are referenced in the auto truck key blank reference. This section covers how to add duplicate keys in some of the programmable remotes. Remember this is a guide to help you. The next section in the table of contents is transponder keys. Ilko has actual drawings of their transponder keys for the US market, please remember it's not to scale. From pages 159 to 171 you will find these pictures along with other information. We will go over that as well. The last section in the table of contents section, is the transponder glossary terms on page 172, which is not the last or the rear cover page. The glossary mainly consists of Ilko products. It does touch other transponder terms words lightly, it's a helpful guide of terms as a locksmith you should know and become familiar with. Now the last thing on this page is the how to use auto truck key blank reference. As you can tell it's in the middle of the page, you can read that on your own time if you please. But Sergeant Locksmith is going over what they have and adding some of his knowledge to this as well, plus some helpful tips. For this demonstration, we will continue to use a 2010 Chrysler Town & Country as it was used in the American Key Supply website training video. Link is at the end of this video. Spoiler, it does have a hidden feature. Plus, we will be using the 2010 Chrysler Town & Country in upcoming how-to videos. P.S. It's another free tool for the locksmith to use as a reference. I would recommend that you download this and watch it while going through the 2022 Auto Truck Key Blank reference. If not, that's okay. Sergeant Locksmith has done this video to go over it and give you the viewer enlarged pictures so when you do use it, you'll know what you're doing. Also remember that this is a publication from Ilko, and it's geared towards Ilko products. Let's get started now. So let's flip to the next page which is page 3. If you look here on page 3, you'll notice you have the VIN conversion on the top section. 
VIN stand for vehicle identification number, by the way. This is one thing that Sergeant Locksmith always uses. There is multiple reasons why he does. When Sergeant Locksmith gets to the job, he likes to verify the VIN to the year the customer stated the vehicle is. He has been to jobs where they weren't the right year and the key procedure was different. This happens a lot with auction houses and abandoned auto auctions. You can locate the VIN on the lower driver's side of the dash looking through the windshield. Also, you can find it on the driver's door on the B pillar. Remember to write the VIN number down for your record. You'll need it later and I'll explain why Sergeant Locksmith writes it down. Now that you have found the VIN, count out to the 10th digit. Why the 10th digit? That's where the manufacturer stamped it for the year. Since we are using a 2010 town and country, the 10th digit should be the letter A. Now looking at the middle of the page, it shows the manufacturer index. We look at this section, you can see that the manufacturer are listed in alphabetical order. Since we are working on a Chrysler, let's look down till we find Chrysler. Here it is, Chrysler. It shows page 34 through 36. Now let's flip to page 4. Looking at model index, you can see the vehicles are listed by model and are in alphabetical order. Also to speed things up, let's flip to page 10. I will save us the time of having to find it. Now looking at page 10, you can see that our demo vehicle highlighted. And if you look as page 36 listed for us, before we flip to page 36, remember the manufacturer index showed pages 34 through page 36. I want us to flip to page 34 first before we go to page 36. The reason why I want to go to page 34 was you show you that Ilko has provided pictures, which are not to scale of the most common Chrysler keys you will come across. Now with that's turned to page 36. Here on page 36 if you look at the top left of the page, here we have model. Remember we are looking for the 2010 Chrysler town and country. So let's look for town and country since that's the model. Now you can see that town and country is listed twice. So we need to narrow it down. Now since we found town and country listed twice, we need to go back to the top of the page to model. Look to the next column to the right of model. It shows start and end. Start is the beginning of the year covered and the end is the last year that works for this key information. If we look back down to town and country and look at the start column on the right, we need to look for 2010. It has listed 2008 and 2016. With 2010 being in this date range, we know we are in the right section. This is the area we need to follow across to the right. With that being said, let's look at the next column. Here you can see listed is the word all. I have taken the ledger for that column and put it right above to help us. Plus it speeds up this video. It shows lock apps. Lock apps is short for lock application, which in this process states all. So this means this process is for a key that operates all the locks on the vehicle, i.e. door lock, ignition lock, and glove box lock. Some older vehicles will have just an ignition and a door. Now moving right along, we have code series. We have used the M2515 code on the American Key Supply website video, so we know that code we have is good for this code series. Not saying it's a good code for this vehicle though. It's just a tool that if the customer gave you a code you can verify it's in the right code series. But Sergeant Locksmith wouldn't cut a transponder key though based on the customer provided information. I'll explain why here in a few minutes. Let's move to the next column. It has printed dealer FOB and Y170PT. Let's start with dealer fob. So which fob is it? Remember how I said Sergeant Locksmith writes down the VIN. This is where he calls the dealer and asks for parts department and gives them the VIN. And since he has a working relationship with them, they normally tell him the type of remote it uses, whether it's a three, four, five, six, or a seven button remote. If they don't or won't tell you and the customer still can't remember what their remote had on it or what did it do, he has a backup plan. Now, this isn't a promotion for this product, but American Key Supply has a generic fob that's pretty much build a fob kit. One circuit board and you program it and place the proper pad on it and good to go. He will have a video up on this in the next week or two. Link be at the end of this video. He uses one of them and now knows which functions the remote has. If the customer wants a second remote, he grabs the proper remote and adds that as well. This is where little tricks come into play on helping you get the job done quicker but also look professional while doing it. Now, let's move to the Y170PT. This here is your Ilco transponder number which most of the aftermarket companies have followed suit on as well. Y170 is the key, P stands for plastic, and T stands for transponder. 
Also remember that picture is not to scale. Here is the fun part below dealer fob and Y170PT, is the EK3P, EK3 liters B, Y170GDK hashtag. In that picture you can see it's the Ilco clone program key blade and key head. This will be touched on later in the video. Moving alone the next column on the right is transponder equipment required. We will touch on this with no pros and cons on these Ilco programmers and clone tools. Now OBP program F, this is not a programmer but a guide here in this publication, which can be found on page 153. Let's start with the first item that's up. The first thing we see is the Smart Pro. The Smart Pro is a state-of-the-art vehicle key programmer that provides fast, easy and intuitive programming via the graphical user interface. Next, we have the TCP or known as T-Code Pro. This programming tool is for servicing vehicles when all keys have been lost, cannot be cloned or the manufacturer doesn't allow programming keys through onboard programming. Comes loaded with all software released by Ilco through specified date. Fully upgradable for future software releases by Ilco. Moving along, we have the MVPP also known as the MVP Pro. This programming tool is for servicing vehicles when all keys have been lost, cannot be cloned or the manufacturer doesn't allow programming keys through onboard programming. Comes loaded with all software released by Ilco through specified date. Fully upgradable for future software released by Ilco. This is a pay-per-use tool. Now the next Ilco programmer we have is the TKO. This programming tool is also for servicing vehicles when all keys have been lost, cannot be cloned or the manufacturer doesn't allow programming keys through onboard programming. This also comes loaded with all software released by Ilco through specified dates. Fully upgradable for future software releases by Ilco. The following programmer we have is the SDD. Silka Diagnostic Device. This is a specially designed diagnostic tool capable of adding new transponder keys to a vehicle using the OBD port. The SDD quickly and easily originates new keys even when the customer has lost all existing keys. Designed and programmed to fit the needs of North American Automotive Key. The next one we have is the RW4 Plus. This cloning device for automotive transponder keys. It is a stand-along computer that allows cloning of fixed code transponders, Texas Instruments encrypted transponders and Philips ID46 encrypted transponders. Also identifies the presence of a transponder, transponder type, ID and manufacturer. Can generate random codes and archive customer data for future use. Second to last is the Easy Clone Plus. This is another cloning device that is for automotive transponder keys. It is a standalone computer that allows cloning of fixed code transponders, Texas Instruments encrypted transponders and Philips ID46 encrypted transponders. Lastly, what we have is not a programmer, but an add-on, it's the Plus Box. This piece of the Plus Box attaches to the RW4 or Ilco Easy Clone, which gives them the ability to clone to the Philips ID46 encrypted transponder. I would like to thank you for making it this far into the video. If you would please hit that subscribe button and make sure the notification bell to stay up to date for current videos. The next column on page 36 is substitutes. Here you see service key Y159 and emergency key Y171P. Now looking at the service key Y159, remember earlier when we were at code series? Here's the key that Sergeant Locksmith would use first. It's cheaper than a transponder key, plus if the key didn't work you save yourself some money. If it did work you can tell the customer that it's an emergency key to open the door and stress to them, not to try starting the vehicle with it. Saving time and money, it all adds up. And lastly is the emergency key Y171P. This is the key which is inside the fob. Your fob should come with them from your supplier. If not make sure the key you are using will fit the remote properly before cutting it. I would make sure to cut a service key or as Sergeant Locksmith calls them mechanical key Y159 first before cutting this key and it works properly the y171p blank costs normally five times as much as the y159 key does the next column we have is notes this note listed here lets us know that the transponder used is a philips 46 encrypted system if you are using a different cloner key shell with chips this is useful information fyi we do harvest our miscut transponder keys 
The last column is card number. This column is for users of Futura, Elko Easy Code, Ultra Code, Tri Code, and Universal 2 Code Machine products. So if you're not using those products, the next bit of info won't mean anything to you. Where no card number is given, either a suitable card number does not exist, or the key in question cannot be cut on the above listed equipment. Where more than one card number is listed, more than one possible card exists. The correct card is dependent upon the key blank number required for the vehicle in question. In rare instances like the Kia section includes an example, in order to conform with code information as originally released by a manufacturer, the Ilco card number requires reverse order depth numbering. In other words, the smaller depth bit numbers are deeper cuts than the larger depth bit numbers. On affected cars, if your source for biting information utilized conventional depth numbering. Smallest depth number equals shallowest cut. You'll have to invert their depth numbers before using the listed card number. Ilco has no control over how others publish code information and assumes no liability for keys miscut as a result. With that being said, use the cheapest key for your test key, service key, or mechanical key. Now let's turn to page 132. In this section, we will be going over the Ilco cloning quick reference. This will be quicker since we know how to use the format in this publication. This is done in manufacturer alphabetical order following by model alphabetical order. The first thing we have in this column is model. Again, we see town and country shown twice in that column. But remember earlier in the video we had the same issue so let's move to the next column. Next column shows years. With our vehicle being at 2010 we will use the 2008 through 2016 which is the top one. From that column we will move to the right. Next. We have head. That is the Ilco clone head. Please keep your mind out of the gutter. In the head column it has GTH hash, which is shown here from page 162. This prefix refers to a modular head that contains a transponder, used for cloning transponder systems that utilize both Texas Instruments and Philips Encrypted. Next, we have blade which is the EB3TY170. This prefix refers to a key blade with a molded plastic U-shaped bow that is used with an electronic head to complete the electronic clone key assembly. Now continuing on to the next column we have is the key assembly. Y170GTK and Y170MHK. The GTK and MHK prefix refers to a full modular key assembly that includes a head GTH and blade EB3. The next column we come to is lookalike shell. The Ilco Lookalike Remotes is their name for their automotive remote product line. And as you can see it doesn't show anything. Remember on page 36 it showed dealer? Ilco doesn't offer these remotes. Let's just go to the next column and we can see transponder. For some reason it's blank, but again it on page 36 it's listed as the transponder column it listed as a Philips 46 encrypted system. As you notice Ilco seems to omit or repeat a lot of the same information in this publication, Lastly, the last column is transponder equipment required. I will spare you the time and misery of me repeating what is listed since we went over it and guess what it was on page 36 as well. Now let's turn to page 153. This is the beginning page of transponder on board programming procedures. Remember on page 36 in the transponder equipment required column had OBP program F. This is that section. So let's flip the pages until we find the letter F. It's here on page 155, the top section. But lucky for us, we won't be going over this by the way. Let's go ahead and turn to page 159. This section is cloning compatible key blanks. This gives you a picture which aren't a scale of keys that can be cloned with the ILCO programs. It does help you know what you can clone with whatever clone program you use. Now this is really basic locksmithing, but this slide here is geared to help. If you look at the top right of the page, you see that saw blade and square block symbol. That is the symbol used to show a special duplicator, which is shown here. Also, here's a trick. If the key blade looks like a popsicle stick, it needs a duplicator like this or similar. Please remember not to use this duplicator if it has that symbol. This duplicator is used for automotive groove keys and most house or commercial keys. Now, one of the bigger issues that Sergeant Locksmith has with this publication is it looks like Ilko didn't proof this very well. These are some of the errors that they missed, but can throw of an apprentice. 
let's look at the top right of page 169. This publication has 177 pages. So where is pages 224 to 229 and the same with 180 to 199? Now page 170 has the same issue as page 169. And lastly page 171. This page has the same as the previous two pages. Now, I know we most likely have some errors in this video. But for two old locksmiths with over 50 years in the field, do you think we have people who do these videos? Lastly, page 172 is our transponder related glossary terms. If you plan on using ILCO programmers or clone system, I would suggest that you remember this page since it will be the most useful for you. Now, it is helpful with general automotive transponder system terms, system components, and transponder components definitions. These are terms you need to know as an automotive locksmith. Here is where Sergeant Locksmith thinks Ilko went wrong. Yes, we know it's 2022. But download the 2021 auto truck key reference and here's why. Link will be listed down below as well. That publication has a TKO and STD section, which starts on page 126. I'm only going to explain why this is the most important section and should have been in the 2022 publication. First thing is system. If you have an older programmer or try to program a vehicle and it won't auto recognize what system the vehicle has, this lists them for you. Some have more than one as you can see. The second thing is the key section. It shows you plainly what key is needed. Plus if you are getting started with your own company and need to know what transponder you need to stock this helps. Lastly is notes. It does have very helpful notes. Example, the Chrysler Sebring convertible needs to be programmed under Sebring 4-door 1999 through 2006. The more resources you have, the better prepared you are. Hey, I would like to thank you for watching till the end. Sergeant Locksmith will be releasing more how-to videos that are step-by-step. -step. Dealing with different publication from free to purchased publications. This is being done to help the apprentice. If you see the E4 Mafia symbol in the bottom right corner of our videos that means a hidden link is in the video. Those videos are in a series called Legal but Morally Questionable. If you have questions feel free to email us or leave a comment below. Remember Sergeant Locksmith's saying one is none and two is one. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment down below. Bye.